guys, welcome back to Nikki's Dancing Knits. I'm Nikki and thank you for stopping by today. So um, I went to Europe a few weeks ago and it's getting to a point where I have to talk about the yarn I got, otherwise I will forget. And I've been meaning to make this for a while, but we're finally, finally settled back in and ready to go. Uh, me and my husband went to Europe for a month. It was a belated anniversary uh, trip that we wanted to do, but we didn't have time. Um, but I had to take my um, doctoral exam um, a few months after we got married. So we just put it off a year and a year and a few months. So we went from September to a little bit of October of this year. And we got married last year. Um, it's a little story to say. We went for a month, so we got to go to several countries. Um, I didn't get to go to yarn stores in every country, but we did go to quite a few, even more than I anticipated in some places. Um, I did see some inspiration from other YouTubers um, before I went. I know that Tiffany Lou went to um, at least the one in Paris that I went to. So thank you to everyone else who made service recommendations. Um, down below I'll have all the yarn stores I went to in all the countries and all the yarn and the specs of it. So um, feel free to check it out if you're interested in anything. But we'll kind of go in the order uh, that I traveled. So first uh, we went to England. Uh, we stayed in London but we did make a day trip to the Cotswolds which is an area of um, England that's really pretty nearby the countryside. Um, so first, first we have this yarn from the Cotswolds. It, everything got wrinkled because I sucked all the air out of it before, <laughs> so I could fit it in my luggage. Um, but th so this is all going to be a little bit wrinkled, but this is from Cloudy's Flock. It is, um, DK, but I think the, the worsted means how it's spun because of, how much it is in the skein is 50 grams which is 110 meters 100% undyed Jacob wool um it's a beautiful color of the sheep they did have like two different main colors there but I chose this darker one I have four balls so I'm not really sure what to make with this much it is pretty rustic um but it's beautiful Made in England, short and spun in England, and um, from Jacob's sheep living on the Cotswold Hills. So I've never had Jacob wool before, so I'm excited to see what I can do with this. Maybe some winter accessories. But that's all I had time for in England. Um, we didn't go to any yarn stores in Barcelona, although I do know they have some. Uh, but the next place we, we went yarn shopping was... Um, Paris. We went to the Little Weasel yarn store in Paris. I'll try to insert pictures if I can. Um, but there I didn't get too, too much. Uh, the, the main thing I got, I'm just obsessed with this color. You can see it there. You can see it everywhere. I keep on talking about it. But, um, so I did get some of this Phil Colana, um, Mercy in because it was in Paris, but uh, <laughs> it's 50% superwash merino wool and 50% Pima cotton. So I don't have this color in a, a summery type of fiber. So I thought it would be okay if I bought this. Um, I got like, I think eight balls. Um, it's made in Peru. The color is 602. Um, but yeah, it was really pretty and it had a French word on it. So I had to get it. Um, I also while I was there, I got some rowing. Uh, my husband asked for a tie in this tweed. Um, I, I don't have the color names, unfortunately, because on the balls it just says numbers 153. But this is really beautiful chocolatey brown with some blue tweed bits and white. Mostly blue and white, a little bit of light brown. I don't know if you can see that in there. Yeah, it's really lovely. My husband likes um, ties made uh, 
from a little bit thicker stuff so I think this will be okay I've never fully knit him a, tr a tie I've tried before but I haven't finished so we'll see but I have two balls of that I also got some uh, La Mia No May, but I did give that to my friend afterward. But it was um, it's like a, a a sock, a cashmere sock in a dark blue. I'll try to put a picture here. And then the last thing I got there, actually not. I don't know where I put my buttons. I'll go find those. But I also got I didn't keep them in here. They're already in projects. But I got some Knit Pro Ginger needles in the size 3.5 millimeter and a 16 inch or 40 centimeter um, cord. Um, they're fine. Nothing good or bad to say. It's kind of just comparable to the Knit Picks Caspians that I have or something to that effect. So I did um, want to use this in a project while I was there. Let me go get the buttons I had purchased there as well. Okay, I did get two kinds of buttons while I was at the store as well. I don't know how to describe buttons, but this really pretty one, it has um, some tortoiseshelliness to it. Oof, I don't know if you can see. Come on. So it's just really neutral, good for that. And then I also got these ones that have a little bit of like glass ceramic on them, green, blue. But the back is one of these bad boys. I, I just got six of each of those because buttons are a good souvenir to bring when you can't buy all the yarn. <laughs> and I, it's hard to purchase buttons online. I did purchase them from a, like a button website, but it wasn't my favorite. So, um, they, they like took back half my order. I had only ordered two kinds, but they ran out of one. So anyway, so I've been into buying buttons in person when I can. Uh, the other thing I got in Paris is from the Eiffel Tower. I got the Eiffel Tower scissors because I thought they'd be really cute. I am surprised we went through, um, you know, security. I don't know if they call it TSA everywhere, but the security <laughs> check at six airports, I believe, maybe five or four after we went to Paris. Um, and I tried to put it in like this way. I know they scan it both the ways, but I was like, maybe they won't notice. It was still in the package. Uh, clearly a souvenir that I wasn't using. Uh, I did have one guy who who after I went through the scanner he took it out he, he rummaged around I knew exactly where he was going and he he took him out and he measured it versus um a little card that he had on him like a standard uh id card credit card size and it was shorter the blade so it passed and he gave it back I was so relieved because I was like oh those are my cute Eiffel Tower scissors so now I can finally start using these <laughs> um I just thought they were adorable. Um, and so when you purchase scissors, they did have a bigger size. I got the smaller one. So if you're at the Eiffel Tower and you want to risk it, maybe not all the security guys will be as nice as mine was, but um, I lucked out going through several countries' airports. Um, next was my favorite. I don't know. I went to a few places that were my favorite, but I really loved... Switzerland was the first place we went where I was like, whoa, <laughs> these are my people. They were all like everything. And we went to uh, Geneva for just lunch. And then we went to Zurich for an evening. We stayed at an Airbnb that was above an Aleppi bar. And they had every night they have entertainment. And so they had this family there that night that was playing <laughs> there. Um country music including like yodeling swiss style and german style they taught us the difference and at the end they brought out like spoons and we all got to play spoons along with them so that was a lot of fun that was a big part of my um historic experience also just like the lake was beautiful we went on a cruise with some uh carlson's family friends 
and that was fun we had some good food and it like their old town is so cute so highly recommend going to zurich if you can we didn't stay long enough but i would go back but well, while we were there for less than 24 hours we did manage to go to two different places for yarn one was the coop or co-op i'm not sure how they say it department store but we were just walking by and they were like yarn sale on on outside at the front door i was like we have to go so we went in there and there were so many knitters young knitters old knitters i just felt like wow these are my people at all the stores everywhere no matter if they were selling clothes or not they had all this different like knitwear in the windows or like even like filet crochet i was like wow like this is awesome <laughs> so um definitely a place for knitters so i did find a few things in the store um some of the this is basic froilish wool um special brand blend i think it's just sock yarn i got a couple of each i'll put the color numbers in the captions but it's like a pumpkin-y orange and then like a forest green and they come with the little extra reinforcing thread, which I love. And I've been looking for it online, but I didn't know how to search for it, um, a good one. And so they had, they were selling some of these individually as well. And I bought like several white and black ones so I can use them to reinforce heels for men's socks, especially. Especially for like my husband and my father-in-law because they wear them, which is great. But I want them to keep on being able to wear them and don't not have to darn them all the time. And then this one's just a different brand, Sock and Wool. And it has the extra thing on the inside. I think American brands should also sell the reinforcing thread. Yeah, look at that. It's on a spool. So if you want to look it up, Foilish Swiss, I don't know, Special Decoder. I'm not sure how to look up the reinforcing thread. If anyone knows, please comment. And then the last thing I got at the Coop or Co-op was some Lang 150 Merino. So this is like a good fingering weight. It's like a cherry red. I'm going to make a Musselburg hat for my husband in this. Um, again, the colorway is just a number, so 197. Everything will be down below. Um, but I thought that was just really pretty. And then I also got some zippers while I was there because they just had all the colors, all the lengths, all the, like, they even had ones with, like, good, thick, like, nice poles versus just like the kind of like thin plastic ones they had like the thicker uh, more chunky ones so i did buy lots of um accessory six accessories to knitting there um and then the other place we were like running short on time because we had to go meet our friends for dinner but i did get to go really quick to another local yarn store that one was called tutelana pull it up I think they're getting further and further away from me than I set up before. Um, versus this pump, um, no, this is the order I put it down. Das Mond Schaff. Hand dyed yarn, look how pretty it is. The, um, I think what they called this base is Pegasus. 75% wool, 25% polyamide, super wash. Um, 420 meters to 100 grams. And then the colorway is Hotel California. It's probably backwards to you. But it reminded me of home and it's beautiful and it's hand dyed and it was running late on time, so I grabbed it. And I also just because I was running and I don't know, but I ended up getting this 100% cashmere because I was like, oh, I want to try 100% cashmere. So I bought it because I had a yarn budget. <laughs> And I usually don't have this much yarn budget when I'm home, so I, I spent it. It's a six-ply yarn, um, 25 grams, which is 105 meters. I don't know if you can see that. It's color number two. It's just like a nice camel oatmeal. 
A little more oatmeal than camel. Made in the UK, but it was made for Zurich, Switzerland. So, kind of local. So that's my Switzerland yarn haul. Um, next we went to Austria. Well, we did stop in Italy for a night, but it was a disaster and we, they did not have yarn stores there. So we're not talking about <laughs> that. I could talk about that at a later time, I guess. Uh, we just, there was just no way to physically get to, um, the Bellagio and Lake Como. Lake Como is like this and it has a little bit extra. And we went to get to this point, which was near like the place where you can see like a place that they filmed Star Wars and it was really beautiful, but um, yeah, they just did not have the transportation to get there. there. You couldn't buy a bus ticket in advance and they were like constantly being full. We bought the bus, bus tickets, but it was a disaster. So anyway, I said talk about it later, but that's the gist of it. So we just stayed in Como, Italy, which is down at the bottom instead of at Bellagio where we wanted to stay. Oh well, it was still nice, it's still beautiful. And um, they already had canceled our water taxi, or our water limo anyway, that we wanted to go around the lake in because of weather. So we'll go to Italy a different time. But this is from Austria in Vienna. I didn't bring the tag. I'll put a picture also. I have so many pictures to put up. But this is from, um, I did kick it up or wind it by hand. This is from um, a local dyer. Her name is Sue Ivan. Um, her brand is called Positive Ease, which I thought was really sweet. And this is 100% um, uh, Superwash Merino wool. 100 grams is 400 meters. But this colorway, I, I loved it because, well, first of all, it was a local dyer. And also the colorway is called Sasha Tort, which is their chocolate cake. And we did have some. It wasn't the most amazing cake ever, but I did like it. And I have been started a Musselboro hat in it. Musselboro hat. So I really love the chocolatey purple color. And it's nicely variegated. It's showing up pretty well. So that was the one I purchased in Austria. We went to a beautiful ballet there. We went to Don Q. It was so much fun. It was gorgeous. The talented dancers, beautiful. We went on a tour. We had also toured the Royal Ballet in London, which was much more exciting because they actually showed us behind the scenes. And then we saw a little bit of a rehearsal. We saw their costumes. We saw where their lights are. Um, but in the tour of the Wiener Stotts Opera, we just saw like the front of house and like a little bit extra. But um, and they were setting like a stage for the stage for an opera. So it was a little bit cool, but not as cool as what we had already seen behind the scenes in London. So if you're going to tour uh, an opera house, do the Royal Opera House in London. Next. We have two more places. We went to Denmark and oh my goodness, what's this town's name? Vile? We went to Vile. I'll put it in the comments. Um, we, we were going specifically to the Lego land. Um, my husband Carlson has a friend who is a Lego designer. So we um, saw him and we got to see a little bit of the headquarters on, um, it was special family day, which only happens it hasn't happened in several years due to COVID, but we happened to be there the weekend, <laughs> like the two days where they were doing family day. So we got to go um, behind the scenes and see some really cool stuff and get some cool merch uh, as his friend. So that was an amazing experience. But um, as we were running to family day, <laughs> we did stop by a yarn store really fast. We were all going to be late for the bus. So, um, yeah, I was rushed and I purchased a lot of yarn because I was like, sure, just grab it all. Um, so I had been wanting this. It's not um, exactly spur of the moment purchase, but I did get some knitting for olive in Denmark, knitting for all we're all knitting for olive merino and um, soft silk mohair in the color dusty artichoke. 
can see how squishy it got <laughs> in the packaging or in um, my suitcase. We didn't pack, uh, check any bags, so everything was in our carry-on um, and our extra backpack, which was way too big for budget airlines, but we didn't get in trouble. So take that for what you will. But I am super excited for knitting something with this, my favorite color. And I also got my second favorite color, which is um, rose clay and also the um, name for all merino. I got 11 or 12 balls of each of these. And then I think six of this. So basically two sweaters quantities of yarn in a few minutes. It was a little bit crazy. And I also got this is something I've also wanted online, which is Regia Perfect in this particular colorway. I can't always find it on Etsy, which is the only place I've been able to see it before. Um, so I bought it because I was there. The color is 09137. And then that's like the yarn that tells you when to start. So you can make two identical socks, which is why it's called Perfect. But I just love how it comes out without any work. So I'm excited to make that. And then the last place we went to was Norway. We visited some of my friends from undergrad there. And I was also a little bit rushed. <laughs> but we went to, um, it's called, let me see, Spinneret, which, and they had like, you know, a beautiful front of house, like, Front of the mill, nice yarn store. I was looking around at all those things. And then my friend Derek was like, oh, hey, like, Nikki, did you see, like, the discount yarn? And I said, oh, no, let me see. And there's a whole warehouse in the back. I've not been around so much yarn ever before. And I'll show you a picture how excited it was there. But, um, so, yeah, we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun in there. Carlson did too. Um, my friends, uh, they were very supportive. <laughs> but uh, so I tried to be fast as I purchased. And also I was out of a yarn budget. So this was going back to like normal life October budget. And um, I was a little bit rushed, but I saw a sample sweater. Um, I'll put up a picture. Uh, I didn't take a picture of the sample, but I found it online. And I think I will make that because this is why I bought this yarn which is Alpaca Magic from the brand Dale, Dale Garn. And the colorway again is just 338. Um, it's a chain net construction. So if you can see that, it's really, I mean, it's alpaca. It's 63% alpaca and 37% polyamide. And it's gonna be really drapey. So I wanted to do a, a the example they had was like a Knits and Pearls different style, kind of like um, those two from um, Petite Knit, but it was their own version. And I liked, I just liked the idea of doing a Norwegian pattern in a Norwegian yarn. It's, I mean, it's not like local yarn, but uh, it is from there. And the pattern went with it from the yarn website. Um, it's not in English, but it would seem pretty easy to translate. So I will put that up there. I also bought buttons there. It's in a plastic bag, but they're like, they're Scandinavian. So that's why I bought those. Uh, what she, what material does she say these are made of? Not, what are retail, it's not steel. Hmm. If I can remember, I'll put it up here. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're hardy metal buttons. So that's all my European yarn. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I did have a bonus because um, a few weeks later at home, uh, we went uh, to the uh, coast of California for my friend's birthday just for the day. Um, we went to Cambria. And um, I got some yarn there. I was I was just walking back to my car to like drive from the town to the actual beach after lunch. And but I was like, there's a yarn store here. I have to go. And so my husband went with me. And um, 
we went inside and it turns out that the yarn store had just been bought by this new owner named Annie, I believe. She was so sweet. We talked to her for a little bit. Uh, we were in a rush again. I feel like that's the theme of everything. We were a little bit rushed but, and she was really busy. She like kept on getting phone calls from customers. I was like, you go girl. But uh, she told me her story. She had been visiting from, I think, uh, Seattle maybe Seattle and um she had seen this yarn store she's like wow like this is really cool oh it's for sale and uh this was in like the beginning of the year and the uh the owner was like yeah we're trying to sell it and she's like it's my dream to, <laughs> to own <laughs> a yarn store so she retired from her normal job and she bought a house here and she moved all the way to California and and she had just been owning it for a week when we got there so I was like wow of course I want to like support you in your uh dreams and your dream job so I did buy some yarn um this is from Manos del Uruguay Vino which is um I like the combo extra fine merino and silk look at these so it's a set of yarn and the colorways are just numbers so I can read this to you or I'll just put them down below. Aren't those beautiful? I like this the variegation in this one. Mm. But also what was special in addition to supporting Annie's dream I also got to support all the women in um, Manos de Uruguay. It's a nonprofit organization that assembles women in cooperatives scattered throughout the countryside of Uruguay, and their aim is to bring economic and social opportunities to rural women. And it's a World Fair Trade Organization member. So I thought that was really cool and beautiful, and I bought this yarn. So back home in California, and I also bought some buttons. Just some marble beautiful buttons so that's it so that's a lot of yarn uh and i'm hoping to start to finally use it soon i'm still trying to figure out um uh, finish up other projects that i had planned before i went but um i think that this hat for my husband will be uh next on my list so follow along to see what i do with all this gorgeous yarn and i hope to see you guys soon thanks for stopping by bye